read this quote that said, you can be a masterpiece and a work in progress simultaneously. And I'm clinging to that right now. <laughs> um, I'm not an extemporaneous speaker, so with your indulgence and grace, I'm going to read what I, don't I even wrote know what that means. Uh, as my introduction. And um, we'll let Phil chat a bit later because we all know he is really good at that. <laughs> you know, it's a yin yang thing. He, okay. Um, um, let's see. We decided to make this day all about love. Um, because except for it's, where it's not. Except for where it's not. Uh, because of the Valentine's Day just being over with, and um, we chose songs and poems to reflect that. That's why you were so mad at me the other day. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, and, but we also wanted to talk a little bit about artistic process and how we kind of get through things. She has um, one. He has one, yeah. Uh, so... I think one of the first things I wanted to say was that um, people often ask how we work together to come up with a song. And all I can say is that we usually decide on a set list, practice separately, uh, and then wait till the last minute to get together and rehearse. <laughs> it's just what we do. <laughs> and that is it. It's a seat of the pants thing, and all of my seat of the pants comes way before because I'm a little firstborn nervous squirrel. And all of Phil's comes in the moment, um, which actually does make it, um, you know, makes it fresh, fresher um, when we get together. So what we make mistakes, that's just how life goes. Um, and so score one for Phil, because, you know, he drags me along that whole path where I'm sort of like, <gasps> we didn't, we didn't rehearse. Anyway, so my process is I'm not static like most people. Um, I'm influenced by other artists, songs on the radio, snippets of conversation, nature, and my dear family. Um, if I have a muse at all, it's that still small voice inside all of us that helps us to try to be better the next day. Um, just to keep going, put one foot in front of the other and just keep moving forward. So. Um, I am influenced by other artists and musicians and snippets of conversations and all those things, but um, I think it's the inner voice that kind of drives things. Um, poems sometimes come as words or uh, statements, little phrases, and sometimes they come whole cloth on the paper and I change one word maybe or something, <coughs> switch a couple things around. Um, but I let things come in their own timing, and um, I think retreating away is critically important. That's why I decided to start the business that I did, um, alone and with other people, I think. Um, <coughs> getting away, away from the the day-to-day -day is a critically important for filling your well, you know, when you start getting dry and everything's mundane, uh, to go away and look with fresh eyes at what you're, where you are. So, um, let's see. <coughs> um, I just said at the end that my faith in love and kindness and goodness informs both my words and my life. And um, I hope you can hear that in what I read later on. But Phil, can you tell us Hi, a little hon. about your process? Hi. This really is overwhelming. I actually have a friend here from high school that I haven't seen in 45 Two years. Friends. No, I've seen Bonna several times, oh. though. Hey, Andy! So that's uh, <laughs> high school stuff. You know. We actually were in driver's ed together. But any, I mean, it's same in the car, you know, anyway. And we lived. So my process is uh, very different than Trisha's. I'll tell you a little bit about myself and why I am the way I am. Um, wow. <laughs> I hadn't thought that that's what that is. Oh. Anyway, I'm the uh, youngest of uh, four boys. Don't say it, but I know what you thought the minute I said that, the youngest of four boys, which means I could never get a word in edgewise. I had to interrupt if I wanted to speak. So if I ever interrupt you when you're talking, that's where it comes from, and just tell me. I'm not going to change, but it'll be important for me to know. And... Um, <laughs> 
And because of that, we lived in a tiny New Englander um, in a very wealthy house, a house, very wealthy community, and uh, we were not. So it was an interesting upbringing. And um, um, what was the last thing I was supposed to say about my uh, thing? That I had a small house, four brothers, hot three buttons. Hot bu oh, my hot buttons. <laughs> oh. I have several hot buttons because of that. My mother, I was going to say God rest her soul, but I know, you know she's gone. But uh, my mother loved to interrupt me when I was singing. My father never did. My mother always did. And it was always something, oh, Philip, I forgot. I need you to, Mom, I'm right in the middle of singing. Oh, sorry. Yeah, boom. boom. No, actually, she never said sorry. She just <laughs> went away and then came back in a few minutes. So that kind of describes how I learned how to play guitar. I'd have to go out on the porch or the woods or somewhere uh, in order to practice and play and that sort of thing. So it drives Trish nuts because I can't practice when she's like right next to me because I keep waiting for her to, oh, did you mean to, oh, anyway, hot buttons. <laughs> um, my, my process is, uh, I, I just feel silly and like a real phony even talking about my process because I have friends here who, who have, you know, three and four CDs. Um, I have other friends who have three and four CDs that are really good. Um, <laughs> you know who you are. Um, and, and uh, I mean, some amazingly talented people. I won't, I won't uh, single them out, but I'm looking at one right now. Anyway, uh, some amazingly talented people. And I just kind of write a song here and write a song there. So I'm going to tell you my process by telling you a little story about the songs I'm going to do. First song I'm going to do, you've heard before, it's about my father. Um, and I love my father. Everyone, he's been gone since 2001. Um, he just got up and left one day. No, he, he's been gone since 2001. And uh, interestingly, what was it, about two weeks ago, I said, hey, I had a nice talk with my dad last night. I, I was sleeping, and all of a sudden, I, I, I don't do this very often, but I mean, I had a substance, substance, Substantive? Yeah, English, I know. <laughs> um, conversation with my father in a dream. Like, wow, this is weird. <laughs> um, but it was nice. Anyway, so um, um, uh, this song is about him. And the way it came about was I was listening to John Boehmer one time. John, are you in here? Ooh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I Hi, have Johnny. some capos if you need them later. <laughs> And John was singing, and as I often do when John was, is singing, my mind was wandering, sorry, and a line from this song came to me, and all I had was a Sharpie and a napkin. Have you ever tried to write with a Sharpie on a napkin? And the line was, and out on the line where the air meets the water. I thought, oh, oh it's cold, it's cold. <laughs> and that was all I got. And about a couple of years later, maybe, and I've always wanted to write this song, but I didn't know how to do it and how to, you know, to, to kind of put it together with my father and that. And I was riding my bike, and I had just done about 15, 16 miles. So I was beginning to get a little bit spaced out. And the first line came, Charlie and Dominic. How perfect is that? He lived in a, you know, very ethnic neighborhood. Um, and his name is, Do uh, his, his name, my father's name is Charlie. His middle name is Augustus. And I have a grandson here named after his middle name, my little grandson, Gus, who is back there cooing somewhere. <laughs> and um, so this song, then I just, to finish it, I had a songwriting thing the next day, and I wrote about its 10-page narrative about this whole story, and then pulled all the stuff out of it that I needed to. And I found some of it actually rhyme. <laughs> who knew? So. <laughs> That's Charlie and Dominic, and I'm going to do that for you right now. Um, if I can, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Charlie and Dominic walked to the ocean with a mattress they took from an alley. Got to the shore and pushed out in the current Let the tide float them away We're Out past the lighthouse, <laughs> out past mansions The lighthouse was waiting Leaving their homes on the way to the sea 
Both boys were small and they couldn't imagine how far the journey would be. The place they were seeking was so far beyond the tip of Japan and the places they'd found. The idea just came to them early that day. They were paddling off to the Long Island Sound. And out on the line where the air meets the water, a tiny black speck you could hardly make out. Two little boys who were out for adventure, not seeing the danger, no fear and no doubt. That was my father's whole life. Harbor Patrol wondered what they were thinking. The waterlogged raft couldn't take any more. They got to the boys as the mattress was sinking, hauled them to safety, and brought them to shore. Charlie, this is his story, born in Brooklyn, an immigrant son. He said it was true and I always believed him. What five-year-old boy wouldn't think that was fun? Walked to the ocean with the mattress they took from an alley. They got to the shore and pushed out in the current. And let the tide flow them away. They got to the shore and pushed out in the current. And let the tide flow them away. So that was a story of uh, family lore, um, and my mother was still alive when I wrote this song, so I played it for her one day, waiting for her response. My mother was never one to shower praise, but she would give praise when it was needed, and she was always one to pick nits. <laughs> um, I say that with love. Somehow I have taken some of that from her. Anyway. I looked at her and I said, well, what do you think, Mom? She looked up for a second and said, it might have happened just that way. Uh, but what she always told me was, I think an older boy put them up to it. <laughs> What's that? What am I doing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this next song, um, I love this song. You've heard this one, too. Um, I introduced it as uh, Fishing with John. Fishing appears nowhere in the song. Nor does John. <laughs> but John is a real person. Uh, John Larson, um, unfortunately, he was born Swedish, you know, but uh, he and I are, Nor I'm Norwegian, so I don't know if you know, but there's kind of a friendly little, much more friendly than it used to be. But um, um, so we, we grew up together. We went to church together, and our church used to have a Sunday evening service. So very often, I would go over to John's house because mine was boring. Nobody wanted to go to my house. <laughs> go to John's house, and he and I would hang out all afternoon, fishing, playing soccer, playing tennis, um, doing something, and then we'd go back to church in the evening and get back to our houses for years. And John and I were great friends up through high school, and then we lost track, and then I got back in touch with him about three, four years ago, which has been wonderful. And I found out at the 40th high school reunion, which was almost five years ago, that... Um, Dave Jones, you guys remember Dave Jones, yeah? Dave Jones went to college with John at Dartmouth and then lived in the same town in Tucson now where John is. 
and told me at the reunion, John has really touched that you wrote this song. For him. I said, well, we spent a lot of time together, and, and he's an important part of my upbringing, so I wrote this song. Because when you're out fishing, John and I did a lot of river fishing. We actually had a, a company together called Nordish Purist Supply, and if you're a fly fisherman, you know what that means. Um, you know, Norwegian, Swedish. No, the pure supply means, you know, fly fishing when that's all you do. And John and I tied flies, streamers, all sorts of things, sold them at different sporting goods stores around us, and we were pretty good. We didn't make any money at it, but it was fun. So, I uh, offer to you now Fishing with John. I stop and rest beside a field just more Waiting for a summer rain To quench this fire burning in my brain I was so sure and so mistaken I lost the way to the way not taken wonder why I close my eyes when I sing. That's where the lyrics are. Good film. Wandered by a thousand streams, wooded paths, forgotten dreams. It might just be I'm deaf and blind, or this journey's what I'm here to find On this path I walk beside a quiet stream I'm almost smothered by this half-lived dream All my days are safe and clean I'm letting go of preservation I'm looking for a revelation Longing for the way not taken I'm stumbling on, I'm on this road I've taken Looking back, I hear the voice of someone Words from a father to a son And they are all in me now I can hear their whispered song Steps on the ground. I've wandered by a thousand streams, wooded paths, forgotten dreams. It might just be I'm deaf and blind, or this journey is what I'm here to find. Where a river once flowed, but hope is mirrored and wisdom's bestowed. And I sense there must be something more. Looking up, I begin to soar, leaving the ground and my grip shaking. I can see the way to the way not taken. Thinking back, I've spent years on the river Lost thoughts washed clean by the water Hidden patterns, I see them now Given to the mystery, I am blessed I've won. 
wandered by a thousand streams Wooded paths, forgotten dreams It might just be I'm deaf and blind Or this journey's what we're here to find First, uh, a few poems about love um, are uh, influenced by the seven seats right over there. <laughs> uh, one for each of my grandchildren. The year we didn't pick apples for my Max. The year we didn't pick apples, well, that was a crazy year. Your mama got sick while baby Gus was still inside her cooking. It would be months until he arrived. Mama saw lots of doctors, and she had a couple of surgeries. Gus came. We were happy. We were all so happy about that. You called him Little Fat Potato, and we all laughed because he was such a big, squishy baby, and we loved him so much. And we loved you, too, as always. Things happened fast and slow. We had Christmas and Valentine's Day, I still have the heart you painted for me that hung on our front door. It's in my writing room now, still hanging. We had Easter and a long, hot summer. You rode your bike and played golf with Appa, and we had lots of games of catch the ball, throw the ball, get the ball in the basket, don't hit the window with that ball. You sure <laughs> love playing ball. And some days you came to our house, but mostly I stayed at yours. And so we never picked apples that year, like I promised you we would. And that makes me sad, because I never like to break my promises. But Mama's better now. And that is worth more apples than either of us could ever hope to pick. This is a very recent poem. I wrote it on the 12th for my Nea, the artist. She picked for herself a yellow plum. The happy color drew her in with that rosy glow on its very tip, the one furthest from the stem, which once tightly held it to the tree. Like me, she knows that how one goes free is first with an eye toward beauty as delicious as the tasting of its fruit. No small thing for my Gus. Your Appa, who's the co-writer, your Appa put it best when he said, you came the way we fall asleep, slowly then all at once. We fell in love with you the same way. This is his first poem to you. There will be others. Not all poems require words, you see. Some will be given in the way that babies are loved. A soft kiss on your downy head. Stories and prayers before you go to bed. Your favorite toy to cuddle as you rest. The gentle way your mama gets you dressed. A cheerful word when you are feeling sad. A silly face to make you feel glad. <coughs> but there are other sorts of poems that come with time, and some, not all, will come to you in rhyme. In rhyme, like the rhythm of your rocking chair, or a lullaby whisper sung into your wispy hair. Like the way your brother sings your brand new name and gives you kisses that affirm his claim. Poems are the essence of our love distilled to keep inside your heart until it's filled with every gift within our power to give and guide your days as long as you shall live. <coughs> And so I write this poem in words for you to tell you that my love for you is true. May every poem you're given bring you joy, just as you bring to us, sweet little boy. Oh, <clears throat> do I have to pull them up here? Uh, no. 
Phil, um, Phil took one of my poems called Moonbeams and uh, created a lullaby out of it. And so we're going to sing that one for you guys now. And I swear she wrote it on a dare. <laughs> Meaning that, yeah, I, I don't need it. I don't, I don't need it. It's okay. Thank you. Um, Meaning that most of her poems, as you can hear, don't really lend themselves to direct transition into music without you know, some work, just to get the meter and things like that. <clears throat> this one, however, read like a song. And um, then, so I thought I'd put it to music, and I'm a huge Dan Fogelberg fan. You know, you tell people today, I'm a Dan Fogelberg fan, and the kids look at you and say, who? And then I remember, oh yeah, I'm old. Anyway. <laughs> Um, but I, I, I love the way he, he was just so, uh, he had such a romantic style about his music. I think he must have listened to a lot of Chopin growing up. And that's really my, sens uh, my, my sensibilities in uh, classical music, especially is more the romantic period. Um, like Brahms and Rachmaninoff and Chopin. Anyway, and he liked all those people too, I'm sure of it. So um, this was designed as kind of a, not really an homage, but just kind of a slightly influenced by. And if you've heard any of his really nice deep cuts on albums, you'll hear it. Taking bits of moonbeams from the floor that seem to scamp and scurry under doors and spill from leaky windows down the hall in places where they. Such wild things 